So it's my great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Urs Gasser. Uh, Urs is someone who uh, has been with the Berkman Center for a long time now. We're extremely lucky that he's our executive director. He was a professor at the University of St. Gallen and an expert in uh, what we think of as information law. He also comes from a tradition of studying this matter from uh, a methodology that's actually somewhat distinct from the way that we study information um, and the way we study uh, internet uh, and technology. So we're incredibly lucky that he is both our executive director and a great expert on this. This is his core topic of information quality. He's going to run us through uh, a very brief presentation, and then I will um, turn it over to Ethan Zuckerman, our close colleague from the MIT Center for Civic Media. Professor Gasser, thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Uh, as John mentioned, this is somehow a dream come true for me. Uh, the topic of information quality uh, has been um, one of my pet topics for many years. So I'm really excited that we are all coming together here uh, today. I would like to thank first our colleagues and friends at the Ford Foundation for making this possible. But then, of course, also our um, colleagues and friends, in particular Ethan over at MIT. I'm thrilled that over the next few years we will for sure strengthen our collaboration and I think this is a terrific start so thank you Ethan to you and your team and then finally of course also thanks to um, the Berkman team for pulling this uh, together uh, after especially um, last week's event with Lady Gaga uh, which was kind of uh, uh, quite a challenge for us and uh, uh, a big thank uh, especially to Susan who did a great job moderating uh, the morning session. Thank you, uh, Susan, for that. So what I would like to do over the next few minutes is, is really to do two things. First of all, uh, to highlight some of my key findings um, from this morning. I'm sure you have many others to add, so this is kind of just one interpretation of what I've heard. Um, and to try to map these insights uh, on this kind of emerging theory of information quality, which as John uh, mentioned, is more of a European uh, framework or approach to the topic here. Uh, I'd like to cluster my uh, thoughts and structure them into four categories. One is uh, what I would call foundational issues. Second, uh, a few words and observations regarding methods. Third, a few areas of application that we touched upon uh, this morning and maybe also highlighting one or two that we haven't talked so much about, but that I think are um, increasingly important. And then finally, also as a segue to the following sessions, a few words about potential points of intervention. But before I do that, just a very quick question or, or provocation. Why do we have this conversation right now about uh, truthiness, about truth in the digital network environment? Um, I remember distinctly when I arrived here uh, roughly 10 years ago, uh, information quality was not a very popular topic here. Uh, actually, no one was really interested in it. So again, I'm really glad to see so many uh, colleagues here today at the law school coming together. And it's really a question, why do we talk about that today, uh, the question of truth online? I um, offer three possible explanations. One is that we feel collectively that it's time to readjust our navigation systems uh, as we are uh, confronted with a new uh, technology, but also, of course, with new players, old intermediaries disappearing and new intermediaries entering the information ecosystem. We've covered a lot of that ground this morning. A second possible explanation why we have the conversation uh, about quality of our information ecosystem uh, now from that particular angle. Angle may be the understanding of power of misinformation. Uh, as it was noted this morning, we even started wars based on uh, misinformation recently. And finally, and that's perhaps more a European provocation, uh, it's not so clear to me whether the diverse e ecosystem that we have today, the diverse information environment that we live in uh, produces always good outcomes necessarily and automatically. So whether this vision and idea of just create enough speakers and enough information sources and then the marketplace of ideas through this kind of invisible mechanism will lead to the truth and to the good uh, outcomes that this trust 
uh, may be eroded in today's environment. So these are, I think, three offerings from my personal uh, perspective. But now more um, switching to a, a summary and mapping uh, mode. Uh, first, we got the reminder from our colleague from the Kennedy School this morning that we should be more specific about the language use, about definitions. Uh, I th I've heard a couple of things this morning that were extremely helpful in clarifying my own thinking. Uh, we had different notions of information actually that were used, sometimes information as bits and bytes, uh, the raw data uh, that we um, uh, are concerned about, the quality of the raw data, but then of course also about information as message and, and effect, uh, some of the things Jochai was talking about. We also covered, I think, different types and addressed uh, the nuances between different types of information. We talked about factual information, but of course also uh, opinions uh, and beliefs. So uh, I truly believe also from a theoretical perspective, it's very important to distinguish these nuances. Uh, one other thing I want to highlight here is, is really what I liked so much about this morning's um, conversation is uh, that we have um, been rethinking in many ways the information model and the information flow model. So the question how we are exposed to information or actually how we find information, be it through search engines, be it through browsing, uh, plays very much a role, of course, in this conversation. So it's no longer um, that we just you know, are exposed to information that someone has selected for us. And to see search uh, as part of uh, uh, the process, uh, information process, uh, that has a relevance with regard to truth and quality and truthiness uh, as one quality criteria I think is important. Uh, also the recreation and reuse part that we interact uh, with information, with digital content, and that this again uh, shapes uh, our skills and ability um, to make quality judgments. So I, I really like this enriched uh, model uh, of, of information flow that is very different from the conversations we had even uh, 15 years ago uh, with focus on newspapers. So I truly think this reflects the shift from a analog to a, a truly digital model, this kind of more uh, nuanced understanding of how we interact with information. Just uh, another quick observation point from this morning, uh, truthiness or truth has um, have been two of the uh, quality criteria we mentioned a lot. There were uh, others mentioned, for instance, correctness of information, information that is not misleading. And I think indeed there are a, a broad range of information uh, quality criteria we could also um, look at in, in the context of, of our conversation today. Uh, one colleague of mine did a mapping and came up with 70 different quality criteria. Uh, some of them, again, more on the subjective side, uh, where you know your pri previous knowledge, for instance, plays a big role, or um, some of the uh, subjective factors we, we talk today, and some of them more on the objective side. But either way, also the acknowledgement this morning that context matters so much when we talk about uh, uh, these quality criteria, be it uh, uh, truthiness or be it uh, correctness of information. The second outcome, certainly, of this morning's session, uh, what are factors, key factors of influence? And I just uh, uh, listed a few here. Uh, of course, the new actors that are shaping our information experiences online, we've put a lot of emphasis on that. Uh, not so much, actually, and I'm a little bit surprised by that. Uh, we didn't talk so much about social networking sites, uh, but maybe we'll come back to that later this afternoon. Social uh, um, search engines have been certainly mentioned. Um, economic factors have been addressed. Arguably, one could make the case that in the attention economy, uh, the incentives for misinformation may actually grow. We also uh, talked uh, quite a bit about uh, the technological factors, uh, the logic of, of distribution, as well as aggregation, network effects, uh, uh, affect uh, the current uh, information ecosystem in a way that is directly relevant um, with respect to uh, the notion of quality. Uh, then in the, latter, in the later part of the morning, of course, the discussion of the importance of the human or psycholo psychological factors, 
uh, some of them even hardwired, the role of emotion, the role of the amygdala uh, in our brain, right? Uh, but the, some of them, of course, also through learned behavior and socialization, cultural biases, and other aspects were helpfully highlighted uh, this morning. And perhaps uh, uh, we can think about and brainstorm about tools and design choices that uh, shake things up a little bit, especially uh, where it's more learned behavior rather than hardwired uh, biology. Charlie uh, made a great point on, on the importance of the legal system, how the legal environment shapes actually uh, the notion of truth and, and other quality criteria in a very direct way, but there are also indirect ways in which law uh, shapes our uh, info quality environment. Uh, one thing I want to add uh, or highlight is the Data Quality Act. We didn't mention that this morning, but that's of a piece of, a piece of legislation that applies to federal agencies and tries to regulate uh, the quality of information and data these agencies uh, put out there. And if you go back to this idea of open data and open government, you see the relevance of that. That's just kind of as a footnote, an interesting way in which law can actually uh, be helpful sometimes, uh, although Herbert Burkett, my uh, friend, um, summarized it at, uh, at a different conference that uh, information quality is a topic best to be avoided by law. A few words on methods. Um, what, ha what is really different, and actually the, the stuff in, in italic is what I think has changed in the digital environment is we have different methods and tools and techniques available to understand the phenomenon we're discussing today. Uh, Yochai, uh, with his team, did a great presentation uh, how we can track the flow of information over time, how we can map and analyze uh, relationships. Of course, the Truthy uh, tool that we had is, is a similar uh, idea. Uh, I think that was not possible to the same extent uh, uh, or at the same scale, at least in, in the paper world. But of course, also, as we learned this morning and when Wendell uh, started with that provocation, the tools and techniques of manipulation have also changed and of misinformation. Uh, and finally, and I will return to that on the last slide, of course, also the methods of intervention, what we can do about it. Uh, we had several great ideas and, and starting points for sure uh, addressed this morning. Very briefly, only are areas of application uh, where truth matters and still matters. Of course, there are many areas we could look into and given the contextuality of in the information phenomenon, uh, I argue it's really important uh, to not only have these kind of horizontal conversations as we have it today, uh, but um, get sp sector specific, so to speak, and look into different areas. Um, of course, today we have a certain emphasis on news and political information. Uh, uh, we have also addressed the question of science and policy making and the importance of maintaining quality in, in those debates. Trade and commerce uh, are another uh, important area. We talked a little bit, uh, Kathleen addressed uh, the advertisement issue. Uh, one that I would add is, is uh, personal information, personal well-being, uh, as including health information that is a key area uh, where um, arguably these uh, quality considerations are extremely important. Again, last week we had here this conference on um, cyberbullying and other forms of um, you know, problematic behavior online. And there again, you see the relevance of um, uh, the same um, type of question about the quality of personal information. Finally, um, intervention points. Finally, in terms of the summary, um, it's almost following the Lessig framework, four modes of regulation with, of course, technological means, and tomorrow is the hackathon. Uh, we'll certainly experiment with that. Uh, can we create filters, uh, aggregation tools? How helpful can visualization techniques be to address some of the challenges uh, to sort through the through the truthiness problem, what are navigation aids for cyberspace. But then also another uh, key area we highlighted this morning, the role of uh, human beings, the role of actually people doing fact checking, uh, the potential and power of, of uh, large scale cooperation, P2P, 
peer review mentioned by Jocha again, uh, but also the role of education and training of, of journalists, but uh, more people, um, uh, young people more broadly. And Denise uh, wrote the great uh, piece on the blog uh, leading up to this conference on this topic. Of course, uh, there may be also a emerging market uh, for uh, truth. Um, NGOs are playing a big role in that, supported through foundations, of course. Uh, uh, new types of information brokers emerge because obviously accurate information has a high value. Uh, so again, there is a, a broad range of instruments and also opportunities um, to think creatively of, about the use of market forces and incentives uh, available. We identified some of them. And of course, also uh, finally, being at a law school, some legal topics these, and legal strategies despite uh, uh, Herbert Burkert's uh, words of warning. Uh, truth in advertisement regulation seems to be kind of one possible contribution. Uh, privacy laws in, in uh, also looking at the recent White House roadmap with a potential right to correct uh, information if it's not correct, personal information. These are possible tools and instruments in the toolbox. Um, last slide, challenges ahead from now from a research perspective, first, um, this morning confirmed my at least working hypothesis that we have a relatively good understanding already and insights into various bits and pieces that are highly relevant. So take, for instance, what we, we know about the psychology uh, uh, of information processing or what we know about network analysis, what we know about uh, how, for instance, information travels in social networking sites. But bringing these things together and uh, develop some sort of a holistic view and, and uh, work uh, towards a more comprehensive understanding uh, and understand also the interplay among the factors, including trade-offs, seems to be a research challenge. Uh, second challenge, I would encourage all of us to uh, think both strategically as well as pragmatically about where can we make a difference? Where can we improve the current ecosystem? Um, and what are strategies that we can apply uh, uh, longer term. I, I would argue both one and two uh, uh, require the creation of spaces for experimentation uh, and learning uh, and uh, also uh, spaces where activists and, and researchers can meet and think together. And uh, in that sense, I believe today's conference has been a great starting point. So thank you for being here. <laughs>